Over a century ago, Max Planck, the father of quantum physics, quietly shattered science's greatest assumption. He believed consciousness wasn't born from matter, but that matter itself was born from consciousness. This story, drawn from the ancient wisdom of Rumi and the frontiers of quantum theory, reveals a universe that sees through your eyes and a reality that waits for you to awaken. Adopted from the Consciousness in the Nature of Reality book by Dr. Fareed Mostaman. Watch until the end. Your understanding of reality may never be the same. At the dawn of the 20th century, physics stood on the edge of a revolution. Newtonian mechanics had ruled for centuries, describing a predictable universe governed by forces and particles moving through space and time. Yet something was beginning to crack beneath the surface. Strange anomalies were emerging from experiments, phenomena that classical physics could not explain. Into this unsettled moment stepped Max Planck, a man whose insights would not only launch quantum theory, but also sow the seeds of a radical rethinking of consciousness itself. In 1900, Planck introduced a constant, now called Planck's constant, that defined the energy of quanta, the smallest indivisible packets of energy. This discovery laid the groundwork for quantum mechanics, the most precise and bewildering science humanity has ever developed. But for Planck, the implications went far beyond equations and laboratory measurements. Toward the end of his life he made a statement that still resonates like a bell in the corridors of science. I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot get behind consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. This was not a poetic flourish. It was the reflection of a mind that had peered deeply into the subatomic realm and returned with a metaphysical insight. Planck's legacy then is not only scientific, it is philosophical, even spiritual. He broke open the materialist worldview and offered something astonishing in its place. A universe rooted not in stuff, but in awareness. Planck did not set out to be a revolutionary. He was, by temperament, a cautious thinker, a man loyal to classical mechanics and the scientific traditions of the 19th century. But reality forced his hand. In trying to explain the spectrum of blackbody radiation, he discovered that assuming energy was emitted in discrete packets or quanta, resolved the mathematical inconsistencies. This one act, intended as a temporary fix, would redefine physics forever. Yet Planck's more profound impact was not immediately visible in equations. It unfolded slowly, as generations of physicists began to grasp the consequences of quantum mechanics. One of the most astonishing implications was the role of the observer. Unlike classical physics, where systems can be described without reference to an observer, quantum mechanics suggests that the act of observation plays a central role in determining outcomes. The observer and the observed were no longer separated. This was deeply unsettling. How could a conscious mind influence a physical system simply by observing it? Was the universe, at its core, interactive, participatory? Planck, who had opened the door to this new understanding, stepped through it with the conviction that consciousness was not something the universe accidentally produced, but the very canvas upon which it was painted. His reflections did not arise in isolation. The generation that followed, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Erwin Schrödinger and Wolfgang Pauli, grappled with the same questions. Heisenberg wrote, What we observe is not nature itself, but nature exposed to our method of questioning. Schrodinger, influenced by Eastern philosophy, viewed consciousness as a unified field shared by all beings. Pauli explored the intersection of psyche and matter in correspondence with Carl Jung. And Wigner went so far as to suggest that consciousness causes the collapse of the quantum wave function. Amid these intellectual tremors, Planck's voice remained steady. Reality is not independent of the observer. Matter arises from consciousness, not the other way around. And though he never couched his ideas in mystical language, his intuition echoes the insights of sages across traditions. The Upanishads speak of Brahman, the undivided consciousness, as the source of all. Rumi tells us, you are the mirror of the divine face. To Planck, these were not just poetic musings. They were philosophical companions to the physics he helped birth. Planck also saw no opposition between science and spirituality. He once wrote, there can never be any real opposition between religion and science, for the one is the complement of the other. This was not dogma, but humility. He believed that the laws of nature expressed something greater, an order, harmony, a unity that pointed beyond themselves. This makes his legacy even more vital today. 
In a world shaped by materialist assumptions, Planck's insight offers a radical alternative, that consciousness is the ground of being. The brain does not produce awareness like a factory produces goods, it receives, filters and reflects a deeper field of mind. The universe does not wake up at the level of humans, it was awake all along, and we are how it sees itself. To embrace this legacy is to shift our fundamental orientation. It means stopping asking how the mind can emerge from matter, and starting to question how matter crystallizes from the mind. It means considering that everything, stars, stones, stories, selves, is a song sung by consciousness, echoing through space and time. Planck's true contribution was not just in giving physics its quantum foundation, it was in restoring science a sense of wonder, mystery and humility. He knew that beneath our equations lies a question we have yet to answer. What is the nature of the one who asks? So, with Max Planck, we step more deeply into the conscious universe, not as detached observers, but as participants in its unfolding dream. If this video touched your heart, subscribe. It's inspired by the timeless wisdom in the seven book Rumi collection by Dr. Fareed Mostaman. Whether you seek healing, love, clarity, or growth, these teachings will guide you inward to the truth of who you are.